sky to cheer on their fighting Irish and hoping that plenty of echoes will reverberate in victory at the end of the game. Little gets the blood boiling, quite like a rivalry game. Barbs, shots, trash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see, the number 25 team in the country, the USC Trojans, taking on the eighth-ranked team in the land, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. 48 Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer, and guys can't wait to get this one started. Notre Dame looking for a strong kick to get this one underway. And here's the return. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. So the USC Trojans offense will have the first possession of the game. So much history and pageantry in this rivalry, guys, but the trophy, the jeweled shillelagh, is a little bit under the radar. It is. It's beautiful to look at. I think people are always just focused on these two blue blood programs. Notre Dame, USC. This is interconference, national championship, and Heisman implications. Seemingly always on the line late in the year when these two teams are playing. Always so cool. Coast to coast. Something matters. Something on the line. You're right. This game is always fun to watch the jeweled shillelagh. Looking for space. It's O'Neal. They bring him down and he's going to lose a yard on that one. That linebacker was a heat-seeking missile and the heat that he sought was the ball carrier. Yeah, great job. Great feel. Linebackers are making all the calls in the defense and understanding when I need to come through that gap and come through with bad intentions. Those guys are usually 245 pounds of heat-seeking missile. To the ground to try to move the chains. Oh, what a move to get room. And excellent vision to find running room there and make a really good pickup before the defense put a stop to it. And I think on that last run play on third down here early in the game, they're making a statement that we believe we're the more physical team and we're going to run the football even if you know it's coming at you. Nice job. They've got the ball at midfield. I expect to see more run plays coming up. Quarterback on the keeper. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Well, they were trying to set up the option, but the quarterback had no chance. Did you see the defensive tackle penetrate? What a great first step. He shot right through the offensive line and got the TFL. This crowd trying to make life miserable for this offense. Softened him up with a run and now to throw. And he dropped it, just didn't look the thing all the way in. So many memorable and historic moments in this rivalry, guys. It's almost a century old now, first meeting in 1926. When you think of all the great coaches that have graced the sidelines in this rivalry, right? Luke Rockney, Eric Parsegian, John Robinson, Pete Carroll. A lot of national championships between these two schools, David. Lou Holtz, I and mean, we could keep going on. The uniforms are always... And he reels it in, inside the 30. And he'll take it in. They couldn't get him on the ground. Touchdown, Trojans! And man, is that perfect timing. You can tell quarterback drops back. He sees his guy, and he knows he's open. But watch the throw. Deep down the field, Palmer, right in the bread basket. Nice play, nice pitch and catch. He did a nice job of getting it up in the air early and allowing his guy to run under the football, locate it, and then make a tough grab. That is the definition of an explosive play. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the PAT makes it 7-0. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the score comes courtesy of an explosive play in the passing game from 60 yards out. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. Here he comes from inside his own five. And the coverage team gets the returner on the ground. So Notre Dame's offense has the ball for the first time. 
As we take a look at our impact players for this one, what are you looking for, Jesse, for a guy to make an impact? Well, these are simply put the leaders of this football team, and generally games go how these guys play. If they make plays, then they've got a shot to win this one. No, no doubt. they got to show up. Th these are the team leaders. These guys have to play well if they're going to win the football game. And frankly, if that's a completion, it's not going to make the end-of-season highlight reel, but in this game, it could lead to a highlight reel type play. The offensive coordinator may be setting something big up for later in the game. And here comes the offense on second down. Back to throw, it's Leonard. Trying to burn this defensive back. And they can't hook up, going for the big play on second down. Now it's third down. There have been many memorable games in this rivalry. It was memorable for Notre Dame last year, not so much for SC as the Trojans got blown out. No, and Notre Dame's a team that we've seen in the playoff uh, in recent years, and they want to get there consistently. To do that, they've got to win rivalry games like this. You're going to play a big-time opponent like USC with all of that talent and that coaching staff. You're going to have to play at a very high level. Last year, David, they put the stomp down on the Trojans. They did. They used that big shillelagh and laid the hammer and took care of business. And you've seen Notre Dame, you know, have these years now where they've had really good seasons, but we want to see them build on it and do multiple good seasons in a row. That means beating your rival, beating USC consistently. Let's see what the Irish have today. Just a solid stop by this sophomore. Cross-country rivalry between these old foes. It started because Newt Rockney's wife wanted to go to California late in the season, and the next chapter unfolds today. That sounds perfect. If my wife wanted to do it, the same thing I would do. Happy wife, happy life. It's always interesting to hear how these rivalry trophies come about, but I know one thing. USC, Notre Dame, every year, Palmer, is appointment television. It is. My brother, Billy, played for Notre Dame, and I'll be honest, I used to get jealous watching him play against the Trojans, whether it was at Coliseum or whether it was at Notre Dame. This is one of the best rivalries in all of college football and one that I wish I could have been a part of. Third and short from the 44, and we might know if they plan to go for it on fourth down by what they call here. Dragged down to the turf, but not before getting the first down. After picking up a couple of first downs already on this drive, they'll snap it from close to midfield. Looking for a man, it's Leonard. Dances away from the heat. And he gets it just beyond the line of scrimmage before he gets down. Listen, that's not going to go down as a big play, but he does a really good job turning a negative play into something positive. It's not a big game, but it keeps you out of those negative situations that really makes you very predictable. Line getting set on second down. He's looking to throw. Catch in the middle, it's Evans. Just carving up this defense and getting it down to the 24. Big time throwing that last play. You know, you think about great Notre Dame quarterbacks. I think back to a couple of Joes. Joe Montana, Joe Theismann, they'd love what they'd be seeing right now from this kid. He's got arm talent. He's got accuracy. And because of that, he gives this offense the ability to light up the scoreboard. Going up top on first, fires toward the end zone. And it's caught! Touchdown, Notre Dame! And this quarterback really does a great job of seeing the defense and seeing what kind of coverage they're in. And I think when this offense goes empty and they spread the defense out, it just makes it so much more simple for the QB to see what the defense is doing pre-snap and then post-snap. You can tell he's playing in a great rhythm right now because he's seeing the field and these empty sets are really helping him out. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. Bangs it through for an extra point. After that latest answer, tied things up, just about set to kick it away again. And he'll bring it out of the end zone. Strikes the blow. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. He leaves it with his back. They stop him after a six-yard run out to the 24. I think tackling 
is about effort most of the time. It's about how much passion, how much physicality you can bring to get your guy on the ground. Refuse not to get him on the ground. That's not a big back. You gotta get that guy on the ground. You can't let him pick up an extra couple yards and stay ahead of the sticks. He'll keep it himself. And they drag him down, but not before he picks up the first down. It's a first and ten. Almost intercepted. It'll fall incomplete. The defense almost came up with a turnover. Well, it's a nice job by the quarterback getting the ball out of his hands quickly on that RPO. He saw something he liked, just not on the same page with his receiver. Didn't connect last time. Let's see if they throw it again on second down. Now they'll run the draw. Man, that D-tackle is a freak athlete. Did you see him come out of his stance and beat the offensive lineman? Getting to the running back, cat-like quickness. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. Wants to throw. It's Moss. Got him downfield. At the 45 on his way. And he gets a big chunk of yardage to the 34-yard line. And the quarterback knew exactly where he wanted to go with the football. Had time, spins the ball deep. Nice job by this offense, understanding what the defense has given them and creating the explosive play. And the Trojans moving quickly to the line. They'll give it to the back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Great job by the whole defense. But how about the little bit of defensive back throwing his face in the fan? I ain't scared. I don't just cover guys. I make tackles. Hit a little speed bump on this drive. It's second and 12. They'll see if they can find some running room on the right here. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. How about the defender being a heat-seeking missile? He was on radar lock. He found the football and flew down with some bad intentions. Seventh play of the drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. He's looking downfield to throw. They're bringing him. Looking for the end zone. And he's got it. Touchdown, Trojans! That was just as simple as playing catch in warm-ups. And this offense felt like they could take advantage of this defense down the field throwing the football. They've got a lot of speed on the perimeter, and I feel like they've got some matchups they feel they should be winning one-on-one. -on -one. You saw a great example of it right there. Lining up to add another. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. They put together an 81-yard drive, and they pay it off with a strike from 38 yards out. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And he'll return it and try to get behind his blockers. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. Here come the Irish, back on offense. They unleashed an aerial assault last time that took them right to the end zone, David. So, Reese, with that drive, I think you've accomplished something you wanted to accomplish. 
make this defense think. You put them back on their heels. Now, shoot, Palmer, you might be able to slip a few runs in on this drive to really jack them up. Yeah, I like that idea, but I also like the fact that speed kills. They've got it at the receiver position, so if you've got one-on-one -on -one matchups, man, take advantage. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Out of the gun to give to the back. Knocked down after picking up five out to the 24. And, you know, when we talk about great third down defenses, it really starts with them getting stops on first and second down. You've got to get those stops early in the drives to set up third and long, so that's a missed opportunity on that second down by this defense. Coming to the line of scrimmage on third down. To the ground to try to pick up the first. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Man, what a play by that defensive lineman. You, you could say he was channeling his inner Pollock. And that's what defensive linemen do. Big, fast, one of the most athletic players on the field, getting in the backfield, just beautiful. You know, you could have shown a little humility there and said, aw, shucks, or something. Aw, shucks, or something. He's got great speed. No this guy is a daring punt return, man. He's not going to settle for the fair catch. A solid return gets a little bit of ground for the offense. Out of the gun. The running back has it. Not much working there. It'll be second and nine. The run game just has not been working for this offense all game long. We saw it on that last play as well. Just not getting enough push up front on the offensive line. They haven't been physical. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Leaves it with the running back. Shakes off the tackler. And he finds some solid space. Makes a nice game before the defense is able to stop it. It's the two-minute warning, and we'll see if the offense can tack a little something extra on their lead before the break. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. Looking to throw for it. Caught close to the marker. It's Copeland. Good execution. They move the sticks, and they've got it at the 33. He might have expected to see this DB up in his receiver's kitchen instead. Nice little zone, and they pick up the first. Man, offenses are getting so good, Reese, at seeing the holes in the zone, knowing you're in zone, knowing where to sit down, how to make it an easy pitch and catch for the quarterback, and that's what it was on third and short. Snagged in the middle. It's Copeland. Stop is made at the 22. A 10-yard pickup and a first down just outside the red zone. This offense is clicking. Everything working together really well. Coordinator, quarterback, offensive line. Good rhythm, good flow. Defense is going to have to find something to kind of mess up this timing they got going on. To the air. It's Moss. Throws to the wideout. Complete to the left. Gets out of bounds after the big game, but they've got it first and goal. How many first downs is that just on this drive? We're going to have to get the training staff to, to give some IVs and get some bananas, and we better stay hydrated because at this rate, the defense is going to play way too many snaps. The Trojans trying to get a touchdown on first and goal. He wants it all. And that one sails through the back of the end zone. Well, the game plan's been pretty simple offensively, right? They are taking shots, and they're being aggressive throwing it down the field. This guy's already got two touchdown passes. We're still in the first half. And on that last one, he was looking for number three. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. Back to the air one more time. Gets it out quickly. They'll get it down to the eight-yard line on that throw and catch, and the defense is backed up against the wall. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt. He was going down. Great job for him. Tackle. Looking to the end zone on third and goal. Let's it go to the end zone. And it's caught. Touchdown, USC. It's hard for a defense to have to cover so much space. When the offense goes empty, you get receivers and tight ends and running backs lined up out wide. You've got to expand, and it's harder to cover on the back end.
Getting set for the point after. And the extra point pushes the lead to 14. They covered half the field with a 50-yard touchdown drive. And they finished things off with an 8-yard toss for the score. So they got the touchdown, now going to put it in the hands of their defense to finish off this half. On the move from inside is 5. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Notre Dame has the ball and ready to get moving. So late in the half, this is really an opportunity, David, maybe to swing the momentum in their favor. Dang right. There's no time to be concerned. If we're a little bit down, listen, I just think this is a point with the offense that they can prove. Like, we're here, we're going to create something now that we can build on in the second half. Coach said all week he wanted to be aggressive. This is a great opportunity to show that right now. At the end of the first half, try and generate some momentum, score some points before going into halftime. Fires to the wideout. How about that play to get a hand in there and force the incompletion? Great job by the DB seeing where the ball's going and breaking up. And I know that sounds stupid. Of course he is. He's supposed to do that. But a lot of times the angles you take are sometimes compromised and leaves you giving up big plays. Nice job going straight to the football and swatting it on the ground. Looking to throw, it's Leonard. Got out of trouble and throws. Fires to the tight end. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage, and nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. And there was lots of space as he gets it to the 39-yard line. Here's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. Looking to go up top on first down. He's got it. Finally run out of bounds, but he has his offense rolling with the first down. That's exactly what you're trying to get accomplished. you got to make sure on all these runs, clock running down, get out of bounds, right? Get some positive yards and then stop that clock. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. He wants to throw. Pocket starts to collapse. Hit hard as he released the ball on that first down pass, and it never had a chance. Well, the offensive line has got to give him at least a little bit of time to survey the field. He had no chance that time, getting hit almost immediately after he got the ball. On second down, they'll try the field goal to get the points before halftime. He needs to make sure those mechanics are pure from the right hash and 40 yards away. It's good. So they get the late field goal right before the half and not much time after this kickoff for an answer. From inside his own 10, he'll try to help out their field position. They make the stop on the return and that is priority one. You don't want some big return to give up a cheap touchdown on the final play of the half. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys, and I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion, and no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. And there is no better place to start this halftime than by reviewing how this wideout has been a one-man wrecking crew. The kid's been everywhere, and I love how he's willing to go across the middle, but that he also has the Jets to burn these DBs on the deep ball. If this defense wants to actually come back in this one, they better hide his cleats. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. Ready to go here in the second half, and Notre Dame will kick it away. He'll start the return inside his spot. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. 
trying to set the tone with the run. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Everybody talks about DBs, and they talk about dropping in coverage and not being physical. <laughs> that DB begs to differ. Great tackle coming up, playing physical like a linebacker. Notre Dame right back to the line. Looking to throw, it's Leonard. A strike downfield. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. He's starting to get in touch with his inner Joe Montana as the Irish are moving the ball up top. And I think that's always the question with the Irish every year is who's going to play quarterback? We know their brand and we know who they are, but are they going to get ballers at that position? Are they going to get a great Ian Book, a great Brady Quinn? That's the next step, and if they find that guy, Notre Dame can do everything they want to do and be great in college football. They'll go to the ground. And he'll make his way out of bounds after the solid pickup. You want to talk about making it easy for an offensive coordinator. You pick up a bunch of yards on first down, make that second down really, really manageable. That's a great job by the offense. Got eight on first down, now looking at a second and two. The give on the inside. They'll stop him at the 41, but he's got 10 yards, and they'll move the chains. You're down. Obviously, at the half, you had a conversation. we got to come out and put points on the board. And, Jesse, it looks like they're going to start with the ground game. And I love this, David, too. Regardless of whether they're losing or they're winning, come out here and try to be the most physical unit here in the second half. Get this run game established. Give to the running back. And he won't quite get there, but boy, after that pickup, just a few inches to go for the first, an array of possibilities here. And that would be the definition of first down success, putting yourself in a good position. It's second and inches. I can do whatever I want next. I can take a shot down the field. I can run the football and get a new set of downs, like nice first down execution. Looking to throw, it's Leonard. Gets it out fast. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Notre Dame coming to the line with another first down. Use the play fake, now to throw. Receiver looks it in, it's complete. They make the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. The thing I like about this slot receiver, he's really intentional in his route run. The quarterback always knows exactly where he's going to be on the field. They've got great chemistry together. Notre Dame lines up quickly. Wants to throw on second down. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming now. And now this offense tries to figure out a way to move the chains after the second down misfire. On third and short, they'll go to the power running game. And the defense knew exactly where that first down line was, and they stopped him short. Well, the offense is trying to get it done on the ground there on third down, but they just can't seem to make it work. Because of how physical the defense has been, guys, it's made this offense very one-dimensional. I mean, the only way it seems they can move the football is when they try to throw it. Goes to the option. He'll pitch it. They'll finally make the tackle, but that option was executed to perfection. This has become almost automatic. Fourth and one, go for it. They did, and they got it. No doubt about it. No discussion. I don't need to consult my offensive coordinator. I don't need to consult my defensive coordinator. We're going for that, and we're going to get it, and we're going to go for it. And if we don't get it, we're going to go for it the next time. 
off the play fake on first down to throw. Caught in the backfield, it's Flanagan. That completion will take it inside the four, and the offense is threatening. Really nice job there by the quarterback understanding it's blitz, and not just that it's blitz, but knowing whether it's man coverage or zone coverage behind the blitz. You've still got to know where your answer is going to be based on what the defense is doing in the back end, and he add the answer to the test right there. Keeping it on the ground on first and goal. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Yeah, what a great job by the defense. you got to understand, it's physical time, right? They want to run the football when they start getting inside the five. Nice job getting penetration, getting the tackle for the loss. And lost ground on first down. Now second and goal from the five. He's going to the right, looking for a path to the end zone. And he has a solid gain before the defense bottles him up. And now a big third down coming up. Down multiple possessions. This is one, Palmer, I'm looking for six. I'm not trying to kick a field goal. I want to cut into this lead with a touchdown. No, you got to have it. And also, considering all of that, this is four down territory, too. So you need to identify who are your best players on offense and how can you give them a chance to score this touchdown. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. And here comes the Number field goal nine. unit for the second time tonight. And he's made one already, and this one ought to be cake from 21 yards out. As we head to the quarter break, it is USC holding the lead. Three quarters are in the books. Time becomes a factor both in trying to hold the lead or cut into it as we take a look at the stats. Not only is the scoreboard on their side, but so too is time as we open the fourth. They'll try to put points on the board with a field goal to start this fourth quarter. Absolutely perfect. After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. And guys, USC has the ball back and sending the offense onto the field. And they've got a little bit of a cushion here, David, if they can add to it on this drive. Off he goes! And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. Well, the defense didn't blitz. They didn't have everybody in gaps. And the offensive line took advantage at the point of attack, getting some push, opening up a hole, and the offense ripping off a nice run there. Took just one play, and they got it almost to midfield. First down from the 49. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. That one did not go well. Tackled in the backfield for a loss of six. And they squelched that play so fast. Can you even still call it a sweep? You can sweep that play under the rug and not run it again because it was very unsuccessful. Second down coming up. It's a draw. Smashes through. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. And oftentimes, running backs love driving this because there's less traffic in front of them. The offensive line is selling pass. The quarterback's selling pass. They don't get the handoff until the very last possible second. So the D-line's rushed away upfield, and now it's so much easier for these backs to find their holes and pick their lanes. Going to let it fly, and he makes the grab at the 20. He stopped just short of the goal line at the one. An explosive play has him set up. That's a beautiful pass and catch. I love the job the quarterback does manipulating the defense with his eyes. He froze that safety, and that allowed his receiver more room to work his route.
And this offense not only has a chance to extend the lead, but they can also drain that clock. Try to barge their way in. And makes his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Cal! Traveler in the entire Trojan Nation starting to feel their oats as SC has built a lead in this one. I'm impressed, too, with the Trojans of this one. They've got a lot of competition in conference week in, week out. You don't get a break when you go out of conference to play Notre Dame, but mentally, they've had a lot left in the tank. They are dominating Notre Dame here, Dave. And it's so fun to watch year after year. Great uniforms, great football. This matchup, the Jewel Chalele, every single year is always fun to watch. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point splits the uprights, and the lead balloons to 15. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they capped it off with a one-yard plunge. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. On the run from inside his own five. Just never had a chance to shake loose, and he'll be brought down at the 24. Here come the Irish, back on offense. He wants to start this drive with a pass. Wide open downfield. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. This defense better not blink. I know they've got a lead here in the fourth quarter, but just look at who they're going against. This quarterback is one of the best in the nation. They cannot rest on their laurels. Someone's going to have to make a play. Big play out of the gate to start this drive, and here they come again. To the air on first down. He makes the connection. And how about the efficiency on that one? It'll bring up second and four. This offense has their work cut out for them, man, because the coverage has been so tight. And if you're not throwing to the sideline or you're not getting past the sticks, this defense is going to tackle you inbounds like they just did on that last play and bleed the clock. Notre Dame right back to the line. Looking downfield, it's Leonard. Looking down the middle. Finds a man on the right. And more yards after contact. Touchdown, Fighting Irish the grab and finish the deal in the end zone. And that is just outstanding execution on that pass play. Great route by the receiver. Good timing on the throw by the QB. Receiver catches it in stride, turns on the Jets, and he's gone. And with the lead sitting at nine, they'll try to make it a one-possession game. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they finished it with an explosive play in the passing game, scoring from 47 yards out. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. looking for those open spaces and opportunity. And they'll haul down the returner to start us on the next drive. This Trojan offense is ready to go back to work. He's looking to throw it. Got it set up on the outside. He's there to make the stop, and they threw it in reverse, losing yardage on that play. Well, they're trying to set up the screen pass to the running back. Just nowhere to go after he caught the football. The defense completely swarmed around him, and that's a loss. That first down was rather unproductive. Let's see what they've got on second down from the 16. They'll run it, trying to drain time off the clock. He found the hole, got about five. He's down at the 21. This is a big pressure moment for the offense, too, because they've got the lead, but it's now third down on their own side of the field. They would love nothing more than to be able to convert this, stay on the field, keep leading the clock, but the defense, I'd expect them to bring pressure here, trying to force the ball out of the QB's hands quickly. On 
third down. He'll try to pick it up through the air. Nice defensive play to get a hand in there and knock it away. Well, the quarterback and his intended target just simply didn't have the timing there. The ball falls incomplete on third, now setting up fourth down. And the Trojans will call on their punt team. He only needs a sliver of daylight. Looking for running room, he'll get it to the 43-yard line before he stops. Notre Dame has the ball and ready to get moving. Looking for a man, it's Leonard. Unloads to the wideout. Got a man in the middle. The offense gets a quick timeout at this point. Every second is precious. And you've created some great momentum. Getting the stop, forcing the punt, now getting it back to your offense. Your offense starting to get in a groove. Late in the game, you need some big plays. You just wonder how much panic there is right now on the defensive side of the football, too, because of what you just said, David. They can feel and sense the momentum leaving them right now with the lead. So someone defensively better step up here soon and make a play. The hurry up now, second down, clock ticking. He's looking to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. This late in the game, fourth quarter, go time. We got to make plays. We got to go to those things that really, really work well. We can't waste too many more downs. I know it's third down coming up, but we got to put this thing in full throttle. They want to just keep throwing it. Just threw that one away to avoid disaster. What a fantastic job by the defense that time, forcing the incompletion. They've got the lead late, setting up fourth down. Can they come up with one more stop? If they get it, they might win this game. Trailing by a possession, they need to keep the ball. They'll try to convert on fourth down. Running back goes in motion. He'll go up top, maybe a deciding play here. Wide open, he makes the catch. Touchdown, Iron! And once he found open space, the band might as well start playing. And you got half your work done now. Great execution, getting the score, but now we gotta go for two. Under two minutes left in the game. We don't know if we're gonna get the football back. We we'll get our two-point play ready and we roll with it. And he just continues to put up numbers, and that number is now over 300. This guy just throws completions, man. The ball doesn't seem to touch the ground. He's back there. He's making the right reads. Right now, he is locked into what this defense is trying to do. To the air. It's Leonard. He's got it. The two-point try is good, and we are tied here in the fourth. A very efficient five-way scoring drive. And the points come on a pass from 39 yards out. Here comes the kickoff as we are all tied up in the fourth quarter. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. And guys, USC has the ball back and sending the offense onto the field. They're going to open this drive with a pass. That's reeled in. It's O'Neal. Stopped after making the catch. And that is a big one. Not content to go to overtime. They're going to try to get into position to win it here. Great execution there on that throw by the QB and his intended target. Keeping this drive going. Getting chunks of yards. Trying to get themselves in position to win. He's going to pass on second down. That's caught. It's Robinson. And the defense stops him just short of the first down. Maybe needed a few more chain links to move the stance. I think in this situation, two minutes trailing late, I think you got to be thrown to the sticks every time. I don't know if these short completions are going to get it done. You're just not going to have enough time to get down the field. So from a play calling standpoint, I think you want to think about being a little bit more aggressive. to throw on third. Grab near the marker is Copeland. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. A 
All right, guys, so here we go in overtime. And just to refresh everyone's memory, alternating possession starting on the opponent's 25. And you want to play defense first because you want to know what you need. That's a key philosophical approach for most teams when it comes to overtime, David. Yeah, and remember the rule change a couple years ago, too, in, in the second overtime and two-point conversion. So all this stuff is situational-type football that you better have worked on throughout these weeks of the season. The Trojans have it with a first and ten. Give to the back. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. That did he had a different story. He had something to say. Coming up, making a physical tackle. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. Finds a little bit of room. Give him a couple down to the 23. And these defensive tackles just eat people. They swallow human beings when you get there. They're so big, so strong. They, those guys, those running backs coming, they just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. They'll run play action. Fires to the right. He's got it on the move. Gets out of bounds after the big play, and they'll be set up in business with a first and goal. And that is a huge conversion on third and long for the offense. I think a lot of people thinking, hey, we're just going to try to get a couple yards, help our kicker out here to kick a field goal. But instead, they get a massive play, and now all of a sudden, they're thinking touchdown here, first and goal. If he runs this back, this game's over. receiver next week after making that big play but defense great job making the interception and you're right doing something with it don't just slide down don't be content take that thing all the way back 